Good morning. It's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, a jam-packed show today. It's going to be so exciting. Get ready for the ride. Your coffee cups are up. Your pinkies are out. It's time to get lamp. Good morning. <laughs> Here we go. Just for but you, smile and laugh, cause God loves you. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. Good morning. Welcome back to the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. You see that I'm smiling. I am poised. I am <laughs> wonderful. I am excited. Why am I excited? Because Miss South Carolina 2015 Daja Dial is in the house. Now, here's the thing. Dollars on Dial. That's what the hashtag was flowing when she was on the stage going for Miss America. And she made it through a top seven finalist. And she was on her way just to success because She's just great like that. And you're going to realize that on this morning. Welcome to the stage, my friend. Good, good morning. morning, my love. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm so good. Thank you for Baby, having me. Baby, you look me. absolutely radiant this morning. You're giving me, come on. She pleaked that hair. I'm just, I'm getting all my Stop life this now. morning. Stop. How Give me are some you? more. Yes, come on in here. <laughs> I love it. How are you feeling? I'm so good. The I'm rain so good. is coming to an end. Almost over. Wow. When you, when you think about the journey mm -hmm. and you think about where you started from, because <laughs> if we really take our journey and we go back and here's the thing I used to work in Greenville so mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends up that way so Daja Dow is not a name that is like it just came out of the blue <laughs> you've been on this journey for a while tell That's us about right. your beauty pageant journey so the viewers are understand right so I started competing in pageants my junior year in high school mm -hmm. so 2010 was my very first pageant was ever. that a dormant right ever actually I competed for Miss South Carolina teen wow. um, in 2010 Amazing. I was okay. a top 10 finalist and won a physical fitness prelim but I'd never done a pageant before and wow. that's really where my journey began my Miss Queen that year went on to win Miss South Carolina Desiree Puglia wow, and you know that began my journey to here Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about my journey, really I think about my crown, my mm -hmm. now Miss South Carolina right. crown. And it's funny because I actually hardly ever wear it. Wow. Uh, that's just something that I challenge myself th with this year is that I wanted little girls and people to be able to hold it and realize that it's not about the crown and sash. It represents my journey because right. it's broken and bent up because I let people wear it and little mm -hmm. girls wear mm -hmm. it and they drop mm -hmm. it. But that's my journey. It wasn't easy. It was about being broken. It was about having to build myself back up. It was about having to keep going and never giving up. That's what that crown looks like. It looks broken and bent and dirty, but it represents the journey, and that's what makes it beautiful. And what I love about it is because what makes it so beautiful is because even though it's broken and it's mm -hmm. bent, it's still your crown. That's right. It's still your story that you can share and that you can begin to inspire others. And here's the other thing, because it is a crown, no matter how bent or broken <laughs> it becomes, people are going to look at it and still sit in That's awe right. because it's, it's such a, a wonderful and amazing thing. You took to the stage and you lit up the Miss America stage. <laughs> Everyone fell in love with you. Why do you think people just love Daja Dow. Let me be honest, every night before I went on stage at Miss America, mm -hmm. obviously you have one shot. Uh -huh. and so I didn't want to spend my one shot being nervous. Wow. So why would, why would I want to look back 10, 15 years from now and say, gosh, maybe if I just wasn't nervous. Mm -hmm. So every night before I went on stage, I prayed and I said, Lord, I just want you to put a peace and a calm Ooh, over listen, me. Listen, let me just, <laughs> don't do that on a Sunday morning now. She said she just prayed. I did, that is it, I, and that get... was honest. I said, I want a peace and a calm over me and I just want your light to shine through me. Mm -hmm. Use me. And so I honestly don't feel like people were seeing me, they were seeing the oh, Lord through me wow. um, on that stage. And I think that's why so many people um, loved me. I hate to say that. They but, did. I mean, no, you know, but no I think need that's, to hate to say I think it. that's what people felt when mm -hmm. they saw me on stage. People absolutely love you. And when you talk about the young girls and, and your platform yeah. and being able to, to help so many people and to inspire so many people along the way, these young girls, do you mm -hmm. find it hard not to become so personally involved in their story, in their situation? You know, I don't because that's what I want to do. Okay. Because that's what people did for me. It's about wow. being personally invested in people's lives and pouring into de into them so that they can be greater. Mm -hmm. You know, why wouldn't I want to do that? Why wouldn't I want to have them see the connections between my story and their own so right. that they recognize that it's okay to be the 
first African American to win Miss Clemson University or the third African American to win Miss South Carolina or the one of two and a half Miss Kentucky. She's she's black and white. She's mixed, but two and a half African American women on the Miss America stage. That's okay, and right. it doesn't matter where you came from, how long ago you started. It doesn't matter if it takes you five years to get there. You just keep going <laughs> and you keep doing. Listen, sometimes you gotta lose to win again. That's, that's right. What Come, on, Come on, Fantasia. Come on, Fanny. Yes. <laughs> what was it like for you when you were on that stage? Because of course you're. So you, you won the um, swimsuit competition. Yes. You're like people <laughs> in the preliminary round, the judges loved you even before then. America loved you. And then you did the talent round. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the song that you selected. So I sang Believe by Fantasia. Mm -hmm. yes. That's my girl. You Shout know. out to my girl Fantasia. Yes, I Fantasia. love Fantasia. Fantasia, you know, we just love it. It's nobody like Fantasia. <laughs> That's right. So I chose Believe because that sort of became my motto, if not my anthem for this year. It mm -hmm. was about continuing to believe in myself over the years as I continued year after year year to vie for this job mm -hmm. of Miss South Carolina because that's what it is. So I chose Believe because I had to believe in myself. Mm -hmm. People will naysay you and that's what they did yeah. over five years. Yeah. Say, oh, she'll never win. She's already done it four times. Right. But if I would have given into that, if I would have believed them mm -hmm. and not believed in myself, then I would not be sitting here today. Wow. And so you sit here now and, and the, as the rain is about to come to an yeah. end, what's next for, because of course I think you took off from school, yes, right? Yes, you so take you off from school. going back to Clemson? I am. I'm going back to Clemson in the fall to finish up my senior year. I won't be cheering. I think I've gotten too <laughs> no old cheering. for that. No, my, you're not. My arms and legs mm -hmm. don't move the same no, anymore. No, this body says a whole nother <laughs> thing. I think there was a song that used to say, let me hear your body talk. The body can continue to talk. Listen, you can still do it. So I'm going to go back to Clemson, finish up my degree, and we'll see what's next. I don't know. And, and I think probably it's my, open. My other friend um, who was over at Clemson, Miss South Carolina, um, I want to say, I think it's 2014. Allie? Yeah, Allie. Allie. And yes. So, so you know, she, just get married. Right. Like a yes. And so I saw that she was doing um, a lot of um, commentating yeah. and doing a lot of reporting mm -hmm. and stuff. So knowing Clemson University, if hey. they know the jewel that they have, <laughs> they're going to end up placing you somewhere in front of the camera, working with the people and continuing to be that light and be that example. Now, here's I what my so. viewers want to know. Okay. What is Daja Dow like at home? What 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 television shows does Daja Dow watch? Let me tell you. Come on. I am a Hulu addict. Yes, okay. And okay. The Good Wife is my jam. Are you serious? I'm addicted to The Good Wife. Alicia and Peter are my life. Oh! So that's what I do. And then outside of that, my favorite thing of all time to do is to eat. Okay, come on. Okay. Come on eating. Now, most people in South Carolina know that my grandparents own a soul food restaurant in it's Fountain Inn. In Fountain Inn. Sam's restaurant. Let me tell you, so, I go to Sam's. All, and you know, stop. I used to wonder why your picture, because her picture <laughs> sits up above it's the large. buffet. It's large <laughs> in there, yes. It's above the buffet. But baby, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, that meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clap your hands right there for some meatloaf because it will bless your life. But it does that. Now, let me ask this question because mm -hmm. let's be real. Yeah. You are from the South. You love right. soul food, but you are incredibly fit. Does it become <laughs> challenging at times? Absolutely. Do you feel it pressure? So when, obviously when you're competing in this world, there there is that pressure, but I had to realize that my body is my body and it's going to look the way that it's going to look. Mm -hmm. I am African American. I'm mm -hmm. going to have hips and curves. I'm not going to be straight up and down. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be a six foot model. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen today. So right. why worry about trying to reach that? It's Love not. It's about being healing. healthy for me. So since I cheered at Clemson, I was already living a lifestyle where I was being active and working out a lot. And so now that's just had to continue. Now that I'm on the road and uh -huh. I don't get to fix it, you know, as many of my meals, as right. I did before, I just have to be conscious and be careful about what I'm doing and still find the time to fit it in because you can find the time. So you you find the time for what you want to make time You got to kind of ba balance everything <laughs> That's and make right. everything That's work. Absolutely. And then, it's about balance. And then go from there. We, I know we have to go, but before we go real quick, are you a yeah. sports fan? Come on. You love sports? Come on Come now. On. Kobe I Bryant. got a Clemson. You got a Clemson? Let's, let's the be Tigers. Real. So listen, will you okay. ever one day just, you know, love the Gamecocks just a little bit? I love the state of South Carolina. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Now, also, when we talk about television, yeah. so when we look at shows like Scandal, Come Empire. On, yeah. yes. Come on, so, Cookie. Yes. I, there was an article that was written that compared you Shut to up. Olivia Pope. Yes, ma'am. And they talk no. about your fashion and your style and how you, you remind them of a younger Olivia Pope. <laughs> how does it feel like to know? Because people look at Olivia oh, Pope and they're gosh. like, she's powerful. She's wonderful. People look up to her as a woman. So how does it feel to know that 
people look up to Daja Dow as a woman and you're just like, I'm just the Southern charm. Let, southern me, let me tell you, that's what's been the hardest thing. And I guess it, I try to stay so humble about it is because there are so many women like that for me who mm -hmm. I think, gosh, she's like Olivia. Gosh, she's like X, Y, and Z. And to right. think that little girls or other people think that of me, right. it's just so humbling because I still feel like that little girl that's looking up to Kimberly Aiken and well, looking up to, you, go, you know, all of these uh -huh. women. And so now that I'm someone's Kimberly Aiken, it's it's a big responsibility and I take it seriously. That's it, Miss America 1993. Shout out to you, Kimberly yes. Clarice Aiken. Good morning. <laughs> Listen, we are so glad that you came. Oh, thank I you love so you. Much Congratulations for me. on your reign. Thank you. Listen, it's going to be nothing but great things that are going to continue to happen. <laughs> Bree Maxwell is in the house. Of course, the New York primary took place. Now, Bree said that Senator Bernie Sanders was going to win. We're going to see if that prophecy came true. It's happening on the Jeffrey Lampert Show. Go ahead and shift your wig, get things together. Your coffee cups are up, your pinkies are out, and you're getting lamped. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Jeffrey Lampert Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down. I told you she's coming, she's here, and she has a fresh relaxer this week. Come on here. Brie Maxwell is in the house. Hey. Good morning, my love. How good are morning. you this morning? I'm good. Brie, I get you? excited when you're here. The viewers love you. I can truly say that there is not a week that has gone by since you've been started on the show that people don't ask about this girl that you talk to. That's all that. This girl. Well, I love this, the viewers. I thank you they guys do. so much. They are loving some Brie Maxwell. So Brie is here. We're going to talk about it. Donald Trump, he won. <laughs> I love her reaction. Listen, I, I need people to get it together. I, Donald Trump, he says what a lot of us thinks, but Donald Trump is not a leader. Donald Trump has, well, I, I was talking with someone the other day. I was like, well, Donald Trump would be good for America because he built all these businesses from the bottom up. No, he didn't. Those were his, grand, his grandfather. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump inherited. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is that bully who got, Donald Trump is that kid on the playground who used to get picked at all the time. And now he's an adult and he thinks he can bully everyone else. Well, let me ask this question because, of course, here's the thing. There's an overwhelming majority who is choosing him. So when we take New York, which, mm -hmm. of course, we do want to know is his home state. Mm -hmm. um, but New York, they ended up giving him 70, 60, was it 57% mm -hmm. of the popular vote went to him. So you have that going on. And people are saying when they do the exit polls that the reason they're choosing him is because he tells it like it is. Do you think that that is playing in his favor or do you think that that is actually taking away from him? It's playing in his favor, but it's not good for the Republican Party. It's not. Because why do they, they don't need a menace. They mm -hmm. need a leader. The Republicans haven't had a leader in quite a while now. Mm -hmm. So it's like Donald Trump is just going to make their brand go down even further. You talked to us about delegates. So, of course, we were, um, she gave us a great lesson last week when it came to the delegates that we have. So, of course, I think he's up to 847 delegates. He needs, um, I think, like 1,200 mm -hmm. and something in order to capture the nomination for the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's on this way, his way there. Do you think that if Donald Trump becomes the Republican nominee that we're going to have a contested convention? We will. Okay. Um, the Republicans aren't happy with him. Mm -hmm. The the leadership of the leadership mm -hmm. aren't happy with him so i'm not sure what they're going to do at this point how do you think this plays for the democratic party that just means we got to work harder okay because we don't want donald trump as president we don't no listen the republicans and, don't even want him as president. and that is very true but there's this group of people mm -hmm. in america who are voting and saying that they want him so the question becomes does their voice matter because we talk about the voice of the people so yeah you might have leaders who are there who are experienced in leadership they know what's best but the people are saying we want trump we want trump what do you say to that Everybody's voice matters. Their voice matters, but we have to be realistic. And we have to think about what's best for this country. We have had eight great, glorious years with <laughs> President Obama. I need y'all to understand, the day that, um, what is that, January 20th? Yes. Um, please understand that I will be wearing black on that day. We'll I will have a repast repass at my house. Yes. There will be food set up. I'm going to have some music going because I'm going to be sad. I don't know about anyone else, but that is going to be a sad day yes. in America. So I'm, I, like, I'm going to be very hurt. However, I'll be excited if a Democrat, mm -hmm. whether it be Senator um, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, Sanders or Secretary, um, Secretary, Clinton. Secretary Clinton. Now, let's talk about the Democratic primary. Secretary Clinton won by an overwhelming majority. What say ye? Well, she was the senator from uh, New York, so mm -hmm. she did a lot of work there. Senator Sanders is just from there, so mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming that, you know, her name resonated quite a bit more. 
for the New Yorkers. How do you think this is going to pale out when it comes to the s neighboring states? We got New Jersey primary that's going to be coming up, um, the Pennsylvania California. primary, California, of course, is on the west side. And I, I really think that, you know, California can be really a swing state mm -hmm. for um, Senator Sanders. But at this point, what does ben Senator Bernie Sanders need to do to get what's happening um, in his... Because this is what I'm going to say, and tell if, it's, if I'm right. I'm hearing that he's getting lots of small contributions, which is adding up to big money. Yep. Lots, and that's people. Mm -hmm. That's the people saying, we invest in what you're doing, we're investing in your campaign. Mm -hmm. However, um, Secretary Clinton has the large donors. Yeah. So she has all of the big businesses and those who are backing her, who are supporting her. What does that say about each candidate? Well, you know, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I think with the small donors that Sanders is getting, and he's able to create millions upon millions of dollars in his bank account, it just says that this group of people is just ready for something different. Right. And they just, they're just putting in what they could what they could give. But what you say that that's the voice of the American people? That is the voice of the American people. The business people are just looking out for themselves and their pockets. But why aren't the people showing up at the polls for Senator Sanders? Well, a lot of it probably has to do with people who probably never voted, mm -hmm. haven't registered to vote, or were always registered as independents. And you know, in states like New York, you have to have registered for your party affiliation by a certain time. You told us in November, right? Um, I think I for think one of the. I think they had um... to register by September or October okay, in wow. New York for okay. your party affiliation. Like Donald Trump's children couldn't even vote able. for him because yeah. mm -hmm. they didn't. So either they have never voted, or they voted Democrat, or they voted some other way in years past. So. That was an issue um, as far as Bernie Sanders and his loss yesterday. Where are we going now? So because, of course, you know, um, Secretary Clinton runs. She's riding on that momentum. Donald Trump, he's riding on the momentum. Where does the election go from here? Somebody got to stop Donald Trump. Okay. Excuse my language. <laughs> Somebody got to stop I Donald Trump. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Somebody got to stop Donald Trump. Some ways, but, and they're determined. Exactly. But Secretary Clinton is sprinting on to a victory. Um, wow. The Sanders campaign has to figure out something. So they have to re-strategize. They have to quickly. figure out something quickly. How to get the people from the rallies yes. to the polls. Exactly. Bree Maxwell, she's told it like it is. That's what y'all love about her, and she's here. Listen, keep it right here. Dr. Markeisha Miller is in the house. We're about to get on our mark as we get set, and we are going. That's what we do here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Your coffee cups are up. Your pinkies are out. You're getting lamp. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, I told you to get on your mark, get set, and let's go. Dr. Miller is in the house. Y'all know I love it when she comes through and she, you look absolutely, you're oh, a presidential first lady why, this thank morning. You. you know, after we had the New York primary this week and everything, you look absolutely ready. Yes, okay. you're doing it. Okay. You look happy. You look happy. And I'm excited because you know what we're going to talk about this morning? What? Love. Yes. In the air. To be loved. Oh, <laughs> what a feeling to be loved. Yes. So I want to talk about it because, of course, you know, and I wanted to have an impromptu conversation. This is what I love about Dr. Miller, is that she is just able to catch um, so many different topics. And I want to talk about love, but I didn't want you to be prepared for it. I just wanted to kind of let it flow. And it's so ironic how it worked out. I'm going to show you all how God put this whole thing together. So when we talk about love and people say, you know, people are quick to say, yes. I love you. Yes. Is that a powerful word? It is, because love brings so many different meanings. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. So many people use it, mm -hmm. but they don't really know what it means. What does it mean? I think it means different things to different people. Okay. Because love is a very subjective mm -hmm. term, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I think that when you talk about loving someone, it's a very vulnerable feeling. Mm -hmm. And it I is. think, you, you know, because it's kind of like I'm giving up my, my control of, of this matter. I'm giving up myself. Absolutely. <laughs> is that scary? Absolutely. But is it supposed to be scary? It is. It is, because it's wow. different. For so many people, it's different. And I think that's where we encounter heartbreak with mm -hmm. many people. Mm -hmm. um, many times people may encounter love, and then they hit that brick wall, and it's kind of like, I can't bounce back from wow. it. Yeah. That's why? why they say the second go around is always the best. Because <laughs> you done learned a lot of lessons <laughs> along the way. Absolutely. Why is it that when people fall in love, and then that person hurts them, that they, they intentionally put up a wall and say, I'm not allowing anyone to uh -huh. love me any way, any place, anymore. You know, I compare it to why do people put their hand in fire and then they jump away and wow. they're like, I'm never going to do that again. Knowing it's going to burn. Absolutely. But this is the thing, though, and I always tell people, don't be afraid of fire. Wow. Just know how to be cautious around it. Come on here. Yeah. Know how to protect Come, yourself. Know how to protect yourself. Absolutely. So Absolutely. When, it, when it comes to love, let me ask you, are you in love? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm in love. <laughs> I love when 
I love relationships. I love it. And Drew is in the, I got to give a shout out to Drew this morning. Drew is in the studio. I, y'all, I'm so impromptu this morning, but Drew is in the, good morning, Drew. Drew is in the studio this morning. Drew is over there reading the newspaper like, like daddy. Like that's, he's like that. Daddy over there reading the newspaper. Drew, wait a minute. Drew, come, come here for a moment. Let's, Drew, you going to come on the show this morning? Come on for a moment. You come with us. Oh, this makes me excited. Drew is coming. <laughs> Drew is like, I guess I will. This is what we do on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. We just make it happen. But when yes. we talk about love, so you're with Drew. Yes. Okay. Drew, love. How long have y'all been dating? Oh, my gosh. Drew and I, let me, the way that we met mm -hmm. is so unbelievable. We uh, met in February. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was doing an interview for a documentary. And Drew actually was the director of the documentary. Wow. And that's how we met. Wow. And it's just been happiness. It fast. has just happened every since. What is it about Drew? Come, come on, Drew. Come, oh, come, come on. Come on here. Come on. Have a seat. Come on and sit down by your boo. Come sit by your Drew is Drew smooth boy. Look at them, look at them shoes, bo. Look at that bo. Drew, Drew smooth bo. Come on here. Look at them shoes. Y'all got them shoes in the shop. Listen. So when we talk, you're happy. I am happy. I can tell. I am so happy. You are giddy. Yes. That's what they say love does. It does. What it is does. it about him that you just love and adore? He's safe. He, he, he's really safe. And that's what women want. Yes. Protection. Yes, absolutely. But there's a trust factor okay. that is there, mm -hmm. you know? And it's to a point that I think that many times when we encounter relationships, mm -hmm. it's so important to make sure that you find that person that, you know, so many people like to say, I want the person that completes me. Mm -hmm. Drew does complete me right. in aspects, but he also compliments me wow. very well. And so I think that he allows me to be myself wow. and have that safe factor wow. that you need in a relationship. Oh, God. You're messing me up in here, <laughs> Lord. Listen, I ain't ready, but that's what you want. Absolutely. Someone that not just but compliments you. Yes. You're the yin to my yang. Yes. I tell my wife often, I'm like, um, what I love about my wife, like I'm that person who's in the public spotlight, yes. and my wife, she can do it, but she doesn't want to be Absolutely. there, but she's that organizer, because I'm like, I'm all over the place, but Absolutely. she's very structured. Very to, so do you find that with you and Drew? That... Oh, yes. Wow. He was keeping me on the clock this morning. <laughs> he said, you got to be there at 9.30. <laughs> it's 9.05. Yes. Come on, Drew. <laughs> my man. My man. Drew, let me ask you. Let me, hold on. Let me, see. let me get my mic together. <laughs> Drew, let me ask you. Let me hand this over to you real quick. Let's talk for a moment. I'm going to interview you, too. Oh. Welcome to the show, Drew. Come on to the show. <laughs> That's what we do on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. So, Drew, real quick, because of course she is giddy and what I can tell let me tell you something about men when men love you mm -hmm. they will step out of their comfort zone yes. to do what it is yes. that makes you comfortable yes. and what I noticed is today like Drew is like man that's that's baby baby that's baby platform that's Absolutely. baby platform Absolutely. but then he's like you know what I'll step out of my comfort zone because I'm a shine with my dime yes, <laughs> yes Lord <laughs> that's it Drew what is it about Markeisha? I'm not even going to call her Dr. Mill. I'm going to be in love mode right now. What Let's see. Uh, have you ever put together a puzzle? Mm hmm 500-piece puzzle? Mm hmm You get down to 499 and you realize a piece is missing? Wow. Okay. What a lot of people do is they throw with a puzzle. I wow. kept the puzzle, and I found the missing piece. Wow. So, I mean, that's just what it's all about. I mean, we complete each other. Wow. Uh, I've, I've known her all my life mm -hmm. spiritually. But I finally met her, you know, she manifested right. in front of me. And I was like, I knew the moment I saw her, I said, that's what's missing in my life. Wow. And I had to find out. And I went, you wouldn't believe what I went through. Wow. <laughs> but I went through quite a bit but to, love is to a find journey. my peace. That's Absolutely. the thing. Love is a journey. And mm -hmm. that sometimes you're going to have to realize and understand you've got to go through the journey. And the journey is full of highs. Absolutely. The journey is full of lows. Absolutely. It's supposed Absolutely. to be that it way. It is. It is. And you can't be afraid of it. You cannot be afraid of it. You know, when I met Drew, there was a part of me that could have jumped back. Mm -hmm. and said, oh, no, being here before, right. not doing this again. Right. And, Drew, and Drew's not local. Drew actually wow. is from Atlanta. Wow. And so... Because he's a filmmaker, right? Absolutely. I saw that, yes. Absolutely. I love it. And so putting that distance, I mean, there are so many different things that could have put me in that place to say, no, don't do it. But I trusted. I trusted faith. I trusted my heart. And we went with it. Wow. And it works. Like the anointed peace sister says, I'm now in the safety yes, zone. And now yes. that I'm in the safety zone, I can get on the plane Absolutely. and allow him to fly me Absolutely. and we can take flight with Jesus together. Drew, Drew, let me ask this. So uh, when we talk about taking flight, what, where do you see 
like, what do you look for in the future of, of you and, and Markeisha? What are some of those, some things that you, you are desiring? Talk to us just... Well, I mean, we have personal goals, you okay. know, as all couples okay. do. Uh, however, at this point, when you see how far God has brought us, we're just going to let them lead the way. Okay. You know, whatever happens, it's supposed to happen. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's already there. And we just have to put ourselves in a position to, you know, accept those, those, those blessings. Okay. I just know that once we're together, okay, that, you know, it's us against the world. Okay. And we can tackle and, you know, anything. Wow. And, uh, and, and make it work for, for our, you know, in our favor. So if you had to say anything to her right now, what would it be? <laughs> you know, I, I've asked her to marry me every day since we met. Wow. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I do. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I don't know. I think I'm going to do it one more time. Okay? But I'm going to do it the right way this time. Can you hold this for me? Gotcha. <laughs> Marquisha. Oh, that ring! I need you to do me the pleasure and officially become my wife. Yes. 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 That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> to be loved. To be. Oh my God. Y'all got to get this ring. Shut up. Yeah. You's getting married, girl. Yes. Oh. To be loved. <laughs> to be loved. Oh, what a feeling. Oh. Not I know. Oh my God, Jeffrey Lampkin, you knew. Yes, I did. <laughs> that ring, boo, that ring, girl. Listen here. And what I love about it is because what everyone is going to be able to see is the true love. Because he just sat and talked, and you just sat and talked. It is God ordained. It's God orchestrated, and what God has joined together. May no man put us under. Come on here. Congratulations. Yes. The first, gotcha. the first proposal gotcha. on the Jeffrey Lapkin show. I just, I'm oh, in heaven. Did. I'm excited. <laughs> Listen, today is going to be a great day. Oh, because she's getting married now. Oh, yes. How do you feel just at this moment? I know you got to take speechless. it in. You're speechless. I am. Because, I, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I really, oh, my God. I thought I was coming here for one thing. And he was coming to support and be here. That's a man. And I wanted to, you know, That's expose him to this is what I do. Uh, Y'all got me. That's like, it. Real, and I was wondering why. <laughs> Y'all got me. I, really got me. The, I just. Oh my God. Anita Wilson says it best. <laughs> I can't find the words to describe, and it will take a million years to explain the way I feel. He is the epitome of everything you've ever need. You're so in love with him and that it leaves you speechless. We gotta go, but listen, this just made my day. The first proposal on the Jeffrey Lackett show. God is good, go ahead and get dressed for church. You should be shouting right now. I want you to put a praise on it in church today, all because they're getting married. Love is in the air, love is everywhere. To be loved, to be loved. Oh, what a feeling. Keep it right here, more is happening on the Jeffrey Lackett show. <laughs> God is good, yes! Everybody, everybody, get With up. Everybody, everybody, get up. Come on. Land, 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 land. With Jeff and Land. Motivation, inspiration, educating the revelation. Land, 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 land. With Jeff and Land. Entertainment just for you. Smiling out because God loves you. Somebody turn the lamp on.